the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. Today I'm going to show you how to replace all of your KS1 or even KS2 fans with Noctua fans. Now, my OG KS1 is not overclocked, but it is a bit of a factory freak. There's three hash boards in it. The Noctua fans that I've picked for this are probably the minimum. Um, I'm only going to run two because that's all that came with my stock OG KS1 is two fans on the back. Um, if you have a second batch KS1, you could probably get away with four of these um, Noctua fans or pick a more powerful model if you want. The other thing is my power supply fan has been going out. Um, I can see it spinning and then slowing down and then stopping and spinning, slowing down, stopping. I'll show you some footage of what it looks like. And I wasn't sure if I'd be able to um, replace it with another fan from a different uh, manufacturer. I like Noctua fans, I like AC Infinity fans, things like that. A friend of mine, Pedro, in my Discord a long time ago, I saw that he was faffling a little bit and he was able to get some replacement fans for his KS1. So I'm going to you know, take his inspiration and I'm going to replace each of the fans in my KS1 and I'm going to show you how. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the chip temperatures and things like that before we get started. See, like there's 12 chips on board one. 18 chips on board two, and one of them is getting hot. So this is one of the reasons why I kind of think I want to repaste here. And then board three is uh, 12 chips. And like I've said in other videos, this is a weirdo test model, I think, from Ice River. And this weirdo test model has been running good so far, but it's in desperate need of some maintenance. So let's get into it. Okay, hold on one more second before I get into it. If you could do me a favor, hit the like button. It really helps the channel more than you even know. And if you like crypto content, check out some of my other content, consider subscribing to my channel. And now let's get into it. I've shown how to take these apart in other videos, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit for you guys to take the top panel off, top four screws, boom, they're gone. I'm going to show you the inside. There's the three ribbon cables for the weirdo KS1 that has three hash boards. Then we're going to take the screws off that hold the plate that protects the power supply. That way you don't get shocked if you're faffling like I am. There's the power supply cover. Don't forget to put your greater good sticker on the side. Now we need to remove the screws from the bus bar. The tricky part about this is how do I make unscrewing four screws interesting for a YouTube video? I guess I'll figure something out when I do editing and post. So anyway, um, now that I've unscrewed those four screws, you can slide the power supply out and check out how dirty this SOB is. Okay, so I want to check to see if this fan is just bound up on something, maybe something stuck in there. So I'm going to take the little shield off the fan and then we're gonna do a little very satisfying RPM spin on the fan. It is just as satisfying as it looks in his videos, but there's, there's nothing holding the fan up. So I'm gonna to have to take this apart a little further. Four screws on the side, hold this doodad onto the side of the power supply that kind of helps you mount it to the ASIC. So it's just like a metal piece that holds it on. So four screws, unscrew those. You can slide the actual power supply out of the doodad. And then we've got it looks like four screws on the other side, but it's actually five. There's like one of those warranty stickers on it. So five screws on the other side. Then you should be able to get that top plate off the power supply. Don't forget, if you do this, you're doing it at your own risk. Okay, so you've got all the screws out. We can take the metal plate covering the PSU off, and you're going to encounter this plastic sheath that's wrapped around it. Just pull it off. It's kind of glued together. And within that sheath, you can see the crust of 300 days of mining with inside your PSU. Peel the crust off, and then you can see inside how dirty it is. We're going to clean this up. And there's a little fan. Um, we're going to remove the fan. And that look at all that dust and dirt. Nasty. And then I'm going to show you on the board. It's like glued to the board, and there's only two wires coming off. So I'm going to basically cut and solder the new fan in. Okay, and here is the red wire and black wire, positive, negative, real easy. I figured I'd show you the back of the fan in case you want to get specs off it or anything. You can go find your own fans if you don't want to use the ones I'm using for your own faffoing session. Get your own faffo session going, guys. Um, okay, and then I want to show you on the Noctua fan, there are four wires, and black is negative, yellow is positive. I just snipped the other ones off and didn't even use them. So now there is no going back. It is cut and now we gotta do some soldering. Okay, so I got some sleeves that I put over that are heat shrink. I'm gonna solder the black wire to the black wire, red wire to the yellow wire. And you know what, I'm getting bored even just talking about this. Just watch this clip. I didn't even get to finish showing you this clip earlier from this uh, motorcycle stunt. So check that out. 
And if you want, you can watch the action on the right where I'm twisting wires together. You choose. You've got options now. Isn't that great? So anyway, yeah, solder the red wire to the yellow wire and the black wire to the black wire and wrap it up so you don't electrocute yourself and burn your house down and you do this all at your own risk once again. Don't burn your house down. Be careful. Well, I've got everything apart. You might as well clean it up. You can use an air compressor to blow it out. Look at this funk coming off this thing. I mean, there's plumes of dust just blasting out of the side of it. It's crazy. I am not proud of this, guys. This thing was way overdue for maintenance. So clean your machines out every once in a while, guys, so you don't put this much crap inside. No wonder the damn fan wasn't working, right? So anyway, job well done. All right, so you got everything cleaned up and you're ready to pop your fan back in. Just pay attention to which way the arrow is going on your fans. It'll tell you the direction of the airflow and um, you want to just slot it right back in and just be careful uh, where you're guiding your wires. There, There's very little tolerance or like clearance at the very top of the power supply. Um, line your screws up like you see I'm doing here. This little fan fit perfectly and you know just reuse your grill and screws that you took out of your original fan and it should just go right together, no problem. Like everything should just line up just like it did with the stock fan. Okay, you've got your fan mounted back into the PSU, uh, your shields mounted with the screws. Next, we're going to just reseal this like internal sheath that is wrapped around the components and the glue is still good. Um, it just sealed right back together, kind of like an envelope. So just pop it back together like that. And then we're going to put the cover back on. Don't forget the screws that you use for the cover are also what mounts the cover to the bracket. So just don't put all the screws in yet. You got to put the bracket back on one side. I'll show you. Okay, so the side that has the five screws and that tamper-proof sticker covering one of the screws, that's the side you can screw down to start with to get the cover back on the PSU. Next, we're going to slide the PSU back into this bracket, and it can only go one way. Don't worry, you guys can't really F this up. You know, um, Just stick those four screws in right where I'm showing you, and they can only go in one way. So after you get that screwed back together, we will remount the power supply back to the side of the KS1. It just slides right in, just like you slid the thing out, and then line up the four screw holes for the bus bar and screw them down. And once again, I will show you something entertaining off to the side while I'm screwing this thing down. Enjoy, enjoy, guys. And then, okay, um, after that, all you gotta do is give yourself a nice pat on the back. Good job. I always get a little nervous when I turn these on after I F with them, but it is working just fine. See, the little brown fan is spinning away. So, um, Let's take these fans off next. They look terrible. We're going to replace them with some nice, silent Noctua fans. And don't forget to put your cover back on, because if you touch this bus bar, oh, that would suck. Don't do it. Don't do it. You might get shocked. Don't do it. Okay, in order to prevent yourself from getting shocked, go ahead and put that cover back on. Should be only four screws. Just put them on exactly the way you took them off. <laughs> okay, next let's get these nasty old fans off of here. And... Mine's only got two plugs and two fans, but if you have a KS1, you're gonna have four fans. So um, I'd recommend using these Red Devil spoofers. I will leave a link in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link. And then I would recommend spoofing these front two fans. This is where you would plug them in for a KS1 that has four fans on it, um, because these are a little tall. See how there's like a little extra on the top there? Um, you can just snip that off. I've done that before. It's no problem. Like this top little handle looking thing. I don't even know why that's on there. Um, it's not necessary. You can snip that off and they will fit vertically, if you know what I mean. Like they won't um, get in the way of the case. Uh, but if you don't want to snip that off and you have a KS1, you want to try this, you want to spoof these fans, just spoof these ones here, then that won't cause any clearance issues with the top. It might be snug. You might be able to get it on there anyway, but um, either way, you can set the top off if you want to. So let's unplug these fans. Let's just see if these work. Um, I don't know if they'll um, be controlled or if they'll just go full blast. But either way, if they're full blast, I don't care. Um, they're not that um, fast of uh, fan speed. They won't scream like the uh, stock ASIC ones. And, um, you know, they might be a little quieter. So let's just try it. Let's see what happens. I like the Fafo. That fan is nasty. Oh man, look at that. Terrible. This with this poor KS1. I have not 
kept it very clean. It is time for some maintenance on this thing, as you can see. So I'm gonna get the other fan off. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna repaste these chips yet. I just wanna see if these fans will work. When you replace the fans on something with something different, make sure that you know that the screws matter and the depth of these fans matter. You're gonna need some washers or grummets or spacers to get this the equivalent of the height of this fan. That way these screws don't go into a hash board or something when you're screwing it in. So um, here's my FAFO solution. <laughs> and you can make fun of me all you want, I don't care. I got stuff like this laying around. Um, if you want, I'll like link this in the description too, like if you want to just use this, but it's kind of nice because there's two different sizes. They're rubber, so they kind of isolate the noise and the vibration, and it will give me the exact depth I need to make it exactly as much as this fan. The other option is fine screws. They're just like this, just a little bit shorter. That way they're not going into any hash boards here. So do what you want. I'll leave a link for something like this in the description so you can do the same thing as me if you want. This is a FAFO session. It's not gonna be perfect, but it, I'm just hoping these fans work. Let's find out. Okay, so just uh, remount the plate with the fans attached and then use the same screws that you took out to put the plate back on. I don't know if you can see, but I had to shave off a little bit of plastic here and this little tab that sticks out on the side was getting in the way. You see that tab right there? There was one getting in the way kind of, so I had to shave it off. But now it plugs right in, so hopefully this isn't a mistake. We'll see. We're gonna try it out. Okay, so we are up and running, and I don't know if you can see, but the fans are spinning. A little mini Noctua fan with PSU spinning. We'll go check in the web GUI, and we'll see how the chip temps are doing. The air coming out. I don't know. It, it feels like decent flow, but I mean. It's maybe not as powerful as the stock, you know, it's not as powerful as the stock fans, but I mean, with the stock KS1, you really don't need that much power coming out of these fans, and you, don't, you definitely don't want that much noise that you get from the stock fans. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna go check the love GUI and the chip temps and all that. We'll see how everything's looking. And we're still gonna repaste this thing at some point. Uh, maybe I'll save that for another video but um, I definitely want to do it before the summer. So we'll, we'll just take a look in the web GUI, see what happens. Okay, so here we are in the web GUI and here's my intake uh, temperatures, 27, 31, 27. And the middle board's always a little warmer because there's more hash chips on it, I've showed you earlier. And exhaust temps, 44, 52, 46. That's with the Noctua fans at 100%. When I started this thing up, the fan speeds were at 1500 and that's half the speed that they can run at. These are 3000 RPM fans. So I went to my settings in here and I changed the fan speeds up to 100% manually. If you want a little more wiggle room um, and you have a regular KS1, like a second batch or later KS1, I would say getting four fans to replace the four fans that are on the KS1 um, should work just fine. But since I'm only running two, I wanna run these at full uh, speed because I want my temps to stay in this range that they're in right now. So I know that running these at max uh, speed, my garage uh, is warmer. It's like 85 degrees in there right now. Um, so I know that my KS1 will be okay as long as I keep these fans running at 3000 RPM. So let's go ahead and check the chip temps too. Okay, so here is the board one, board two, board three, and they're all in the green. Board two, remember we had that problem chip earlier. Um, it was running in the 90s. Now it's down into the 80s, and this was uh, shortly after I turned my fan speeds back up to 100%. So um, this probably will cool down even more. And this is without repasting the chips. So these Noctua fans are nice and quiet, and they're keeping my chip temps where I want them to be, even without the repaste. And they are keeping my intake and exhaust temps acceptable for a stock KS1, even though it's a little bit of a freak. It probably puts off more heat than a stock KS1. Uh, because there's three hash boards and like I said 50 times but um, if you have a stock KS1 with four fans and you want to replace them with these fans I think they should do okay keep a real close eye on it if you're overclocking you know how it goes when you overclock you're going to create more heat and there's more chance you could damage your chips and everything so um, 
let's go ahead and do a quick audio test. And you've seen probably my other videos where the KS-1, when it boots up, is just screaming, it's so loud. I'm not gonna show you more audio of a stock KS-1. You can check out some of my earlier videos if you want. And if you have one, you know it's very loud. Um, I will show you my results with these Nocto fans. We'll show you with all the fans maxed out. I mean, the power supply fan uh, probably defaults to maxed out. And then these are at 3000 RPM, which is their max. So I'll show you exactly um, how quiet they are with the decibel meter. Okay, so I am back out in the garage and just doing a quick shout out to my friends who have sent me banners. I'm abusive to my friends. As you can see, I still have poor RPM and coastal crypto and financial failure behind the shelf. I just haven't had a chance to move everything around. Sorry guys, sticker wall. If you guys want to send me some stickers, let me know. Um, and don't forget, you can get 10% off Tangent Wallet with the discount code GREATERGOOD and they got free shipping if you buy two until the end of April. That's, um, I'm mining straight to my Tangent Wallet with my OG KS1 here. So, um, Let's go ahead and check the decibel meter. You can tell a massive difference from a stock KS1 to this. It's just so much quieter. So let's go ahead and I'll shut up so we can get the actual number on the decibel meter here. High 50s, low 60s, that is awesome. Quick shout out to The Technicals. He is another crypto mining YouTuber and his videos are both informative and hilarious like i mean check out these thumbnails that's what you can expect to get like he's he lays it out in a way that you can understand and he's funny i mean just read this crypto mining content for your consideration by reading this you are legally required to subscribe <laughs> that's the kind of stuff you can get from the technical so um give him a sub um tell him greater good mining sent you and let's get back to the video i am happy with the way this turned out I hope that this helps you guys. If you maybe have a power supply fan that goes bad, that was what really kind of prompted me to do this. I was like, I, I don't want to swap the power supply out. It's working still. Um, I want to get a cheaper solution because the power supplies from Ice River are kind of expensive. So um, I do have a backup power supply in case this somehow fails eventually, but I don't think it will. It was running like that for a while um, with the fan kind of cutting in and out. So I think this knock to a fan is going to really help. You saw how quiet it was. Um, they're energy efficient fans. So I am, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Hopefully it helps some of you guys. Like, you know, maybe you don't necessarily need to throw away your power supply. Um, you know, you could check the fan on it and see if it just maybe needs to be replaced. So, um, also those Noctua fans on the back that are uh, responsible for cooling the hash boards. Um, I've said this several times in this video, but I just, I want to like nail this point home. Just be real careful because I know my situation. I know my ambient temps in my garage. I'm not overclocking this thing. I watch it closely. So just be careful um, with how many fans you want to add. You know, I would recommend doing all four if you already have four on your KS1. I'm sticking with the two because I, I know my situation and I'm going to repaste this thing. So just be very careful with your chip temps and what fans you select. And don't forget, it's all at your own risk. This is just a FAFO session and it all worked out good for me. But just be very careful with your own mining rigs, guys. I don't want anything bad to happen to your gear. So anyway, I hope it was helpful. If it was, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.